the, th the key thing to point out with Albany Congress is it fails. So you're probably thinking, like, why are we even talking about this Congress that didn't even work? The reason it's significant is it is for what happens next, right? Is in um, 1754, the colonist Massachusetts is like, I don't want Virginia telling me what to do. And South Carolina is like, I don't want Massachusetts telling me what, what to do. And so in 1754, the colonists can't even agree to create an intercolonial Congress, a Congress that would coordinate them as colonies. But within 25 years, they're not only going to agree to create some sort of intercolonial union, they're going to break free from England and have a revolution and become their own country. And 25 years isn't really that long in like the whole scope of history. And so that's what makes the Albany Congress so interesting to historians, is what's happening in those intervening 25 years, just, just two decades really, what's happening that's gonna so push the colonists to not just form an intercolonial Congress, but to declare their independence and break free uh, from England. Uh, the Congress also, as you noted in the link that you have there, was also attempting to um, ally themselves with uh, Native peoples. And that too is not really very successful because again, from a Native American perspective, why choose a side in this conflict when you can kind of play each side off the other? Again, we'll see though in the American Revolution, that alliance that the Iroquois had formed way back before even uh, Europeans arrived here, that's going to fall apart in the American Revolution, which just shows how devastating that war will be for indigenous peoples. All right, if you have any questions, you can put those in the discussion board. Take care.